Narcissists love to accuse you of things falsely. That is their MO. In this video, I'm going to give you six, yes, count them six ways to deal with narcissist false allegations. You will not want to miss this video, so stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I am an attorney. I am a narcissist negotiation expert, and on this channel and in these videos, I teach you how to deal with the drama, trauma, and chaos of narcissists, and how to get, most importantly, how to get out of these relationships with narcissists. So you are going to want to make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so that you can make sure that when I upload brand new content, you are the first to know and you will be able to jump right on it and watch these brand new videos, okay? So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell, okay? So what do narcissists love to do? They love to accuse you of things falsely. Why do they love to accuse you of things falsely? Because they love to trigger you. They love to get under your skin. But let's take that a step even further. Okay, so what has been going on in your relationship? All right. So first of all, you have probably been supplying them. You've been giving them narcissistic supply. It started off where they love bombed you. They love bombed you. They came on super strong, were impossible to resist. They were charming. They were charismatic. They seemed perfect at the beginning. Am I right? Okay. Now you thought that they were amazing. You thought they were wonderful. Maybe you thought they even loved you. Maybe you thought that they were perfect. You know, all of these things. Now, it was all a manipulation. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. It was all a manipulation. It was all meant to get this form of supply from you. Now, I have to tell you, there are a couple of different kinds of supply. What you've probably been giving them is like the best form of supply. And the best forms of supply for them are, you know, adulation, service, making them look good, really, really stroking their ego at the top level. You know, there's di these different phases of a narcissistic relationship. There's the love bombing, and then you go into the devaluing, and then there's the discarding. And I have videos, by the way, on all the different phases of a narcissistic relationship, the love bombing, the devaluing, and the discarding. Definitely check out my videos on all of those phases of a narcissistic relationship if you haven't checked those out. When you go to leave a narcissistic relationship, whether it's you leaving or them leaving, that's when you go into that discard phase. That's when you see that smear campaign start. That's the birth of the smear campaign. By the way, it can start even before you even realize that the discard phase has started. All right. And I do have a whole video on how to shut down a narcissist smear campaign. You can check that out too. But what's happening is during this discard phase is that you've become public, public enemy number one, and you're no longer giving them the best form of supply anymore. So now they're going to want to continue to get supply from you, but they're just going to take it in the lower form of supply, which is making you miserable, making you squirm, showing them that they can still have control over you in some way. And so how are they going to do that? They're going to do these false allegations. And so they're going to start either through the court system, which is what I've seen as an attorney, by the way, over and over and over again. I mean, they file this stuff either through the pleadings. So you'll see it in the divorce pleadings. Well, they'll actually say these things in the divorce petition. They'll say father was a, you know, molester. 
I mean, I've seen that horrible, horrible things like that, or a, a wife beater or a child beater, or, you know, they will say, you know, the worst possible things you can imagine where you think, oh my gosh, I never even touched them. The worst possible things. Or they will just even say things like they didn't pay child support, they withheld money, things like that. Or they spent lots of money, they spent lots of money on the people, lies about things like that. You will see those kinds of things in actual documents that are filed with the court. I think it's imp important that we walk through the types of false allegations that you will see. Then the other types of false allegations that you will see as well are people will see in, in the actual letters that go back and forth between the attorneys. They'll tell their attorney they didn't feed the children, that the children ate candy all weekend long or nothing all weekend long or pizza or junk food all the entire time that they were with the dad or the mom or that the whole time they were with the dad or the mom, they were with a babysitter or nobody, all kinds of things. I mean, the types of false allegations or ac accusations when you're dealing with narcissists are really endless. I mean, completely infinite. And honestly, the funny thing is they will contradict themselves over and over and over again. That's the thing that's really interesting and, and also very, very helpful for you because this is where you can start building your leverage. And this is where my slay methodology will very, very much help you. Strategy, leverage, anticipate where they're going to go, be two steps ahead of them and focus on you, your case and your position. That's what the slay methodology is. And it will very much help you because they are liars. And you know what judges hate more than anything? They hate liars. And narcissists are lazy. They're also very, very lazy. They also ignore court orders. And judges hate lazy liars who ignore court orders. And narcissists are all of those things. And I'll tell you, that at the end of the day, if you are just diligent in keeping track of these things, you really will be able to catch them. And so the thing that you have to remember is to just keep your wits about you and, and remember who you're dealing with and not allow them to get the best of you understand who it is that you're dealing with. And every time they do one of those things that they do, just say, thank you very much. You just gave me something else. Understand that what it is that you're building. You have to play a little bit of the long game. All right. So I'm going to give you six ways to deal with the narcissist's false allegations, but just understand that yes, they do this, Yes, they're trying to trigger you. Yes, they're trying to get you to look like the crazy one. That's why they do it. They want you to be triggered, number one, because they get supply from it. Number two, they want you to look like the crazy one. So when you get sucked into that mud and you react, they go, oh, look, you're the crazy one. And you, you took that bait, hook, line, and sinker. They use your reaction against you. And there you go. Don't get sucked into it. So that's number two. And then number three, as long as you are giving them that supply, as long as they catch that fish, they will never leave you alone because you are giving them that supply. So you don't want to go into it because of that as well. All right, six ways to deal with the narcissist's false allegations. Number one, you can respond, do not react, do not react. And I know you know that that was where I was going, right? You know, it's like they got the fish. Do not give them that. Unless you want to be that fish that they have reeled in, don't be that for them. You know, you can respond, 
Do not react. Just picture yourself. You're that fish that they've reeled in. Okay. Don't be that. So that's one way to deal with the narcissist false allegations. Number two, make sure to document, document, document. And in my slay program, I have the 12 areas that you should be documenting. I have a whole chart on that. And I have a whole module on this, but make sure that you are being very, very diligent on how you are documenting and do, do it in real time. Please do yourself a favor and do it in real time. It is so hard to go back and try to recreate Oh, what was that? What day was that? And they do, they give you so much material. They really do. I remember a case one time where, you know, the wife threw the son, it was like a 14 year old son, threw him out of the house at, you know, four o'clock in the morning. Just she had a big fight with the son. It's like in the middle of December, it was like cold out. His husband had to go pick up the son. And she sends the husband an email saying, yeah, it's probably better if we take some time apart from each other, you should call the school bus service and have the bus start picking him up at your house, you know, for now. And then the next thing you know, the lawyer gets a motion saying that husband has been withholding son from wife and all of this stuff. When there's an email out there that says, you know, you should call the bus service. I mean, it's like mind blowing, you know, but this is the kind of thing that they do. So that's why you document, 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 you keep it in a file. You know, you just have all this stuff, you have it ready to go so that you don't have to go back. You don't have to go look for all this stuff. What day was that? You know what I'm saying? keep track of it in real time. And I have a whole other video, by the way, on how to keep your cool against narcissists. Definitely check that out too. So that's number two. Number three is don't get sucked into the mud. Do not get sucked into the mud. Start looking at it as if you're a third party. You know, try try starting to look at it as if you're an observer. I have a video where I was interviewing Judge Lynn Toller from Television's Divorce Court, and she talked about that too, where you just start looking at it as if you're looking at something happening. Oh, I see that you're upset. Oh, I see that, you know, you are unhappy about something. You want to tell me more about that? You know, because you have to understand that these are people who are just deeply unhappy and that that's what you're dealing with. So, you know, don't, don't be surprised when they act like themselves, be surprised if they act normal. Okay. So that's number three way to deal with a narcissist, false allegations. And then number four is become like Teflon when it comes to those guilt trips. You know, they're going to try to guilt you into things a lot of times, you know, that's another way that they try to suck you in to the, this thing. You know, one way, of course, is they try to trigger you by getting you angry or saying things. But another way is they try to guilt you into it. Oh, you know, I thought maybe you might want to take care of your family, or I thought that you were a better mother than that, but I guess not. You know, something like that. Don't go for the guilt thing either. You know, become like Teflon, you know, stand in your power. You know what's right. Just remember, you know, keep your focus on what you know to be fair, what you know to be what's right, what you know to be what's equitable. Don't allow their manipulation to, to get inside your head anymore, because a lot of times the voices inside your head, especially if you've been with this person for a long time are their voices and not your voices and not the voices of what's reality or what's your own voice. 
And, and that's why, you know, you've got to create these boundaries and you've got to start staying away from them and keeping your interactions as brief and unemotional as possible and just not allowing them to penetrate your space. So don't allow them to penetrate. Okay. So that's number four. And by the way, if you agree with me so far on all of this, give me a spot on in the comments, just say spot on so far. And number five, number five is use one method for communications. And again, this is your way of not allowing yourself to be attacked from 50 different directions, right? So you're going to use one method for communication and it really should be just email or an app. If you have children, you can use an app. Again, they may try to goad you. They may try to say, oh, you know, why do you have to be so rigid? We can talk in different directions. We can talk. How come we can't, you know, just meet somewhere or whatever, especially because, you know, they're going to try to push the boundaries, push the different directions. Just don't do that. Don't engage. Just say, you know, no, we're, we're going to use one form and it's going to be email, you know, and if you have kids, an app is great. And I do recommend, especially having it turned into a court order, because that way, if they don't use the app, you can file a motion for contempt or whatever, because, you know, they're, they're going to push the envelope and, and you need to start to heal and you need to start having time away because that's where you'll start to be able to move away from this whole situation. Okay. So that's the fifth way that you get to deal with a narcissist false allegations. One method for communication that can be tracked. And finally, the last way is try not to ever be alone with the narcissist because they'll say things. I mean, I had a client one time who they did the exchange and with the child. And then after they did the exchange with the child, the husband wrote in the, the app, thanks for agreeing to switch weekends next weekend. I really appreciate that. That conversation never even took place. I mean, it was wild stuff, you know, but that's what they do. That wasn't a false allegation. It was just a false conversation, but that's, that's what they do. It's like a wild odyssey when it comes to dealing with narcissists. So, you know, really try not to be alone with the narcissist. If you can try to do your exchanges in front of other people, if possible, you know, I recommend parallel parenting plans when you're dealing with narcissists, meaning, you know, you just try to have as little interaction as possible do your exchanges at schools, meaning drop off in the morning, pick up in the afternoon, just try not to have, ever have to see each other, do all of your interaction through the app. I mean, as far as the communication goes. So those are six ways that you can deal with a narcissist, false allegations. Basically, you're just trying to make sure that there's always a way that you can prove things. And as I said, you know, there are always ways that you can beat narcissists in court. It's actually very easy to beat narcissists in court. I can help you do it. I know how to win. I know how to fight back against narcissists in court. You can definitely start by grabbing my free Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet at winmynegotiation.com. Join my free private Facebook group at Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. And remember, they only win if you give in. You can definitely beat them, okay? Today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. You can do this. And thanks so much for joining me today. And I will definitely see you in the next episode of Negotiate Your Best Life.